Bob, we watched an ad. We watched a couple this morning. I mean, he was a great executive in many ways, and we want to hear about it. But, man, he could sell as well, couldn't he? Well, absolutely. That was one of his strongest traits. He was uh, a master salesman, brilliant communicator, and extremely convincing. Sometimes it was, you know, it was dangerous to listen to him because he could make the illogical seem logical, and you, you believed it until you walked out of the office again. So uh, he, was, uh, he was brilliant when it came to communications. Yeah, you know, I think it might be helpful for some of our younger viewers to sort of frame what the world was like back in the late 70s, even early 80s, for the U.S. auto industry, for views from the consumer viewpoint of uh, the quality of automobiles and how Mr. Iacocca sort of changed that equation. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we were in, in the process of really giving it away to the imports, and the federal government had passed fuel economy legislation mandating an average of 27 miles per gallon for passenger cars, which greatly benefited the imports because the imports made, made nothing but small cars, so they didn't have to do anything to meet the average, whereas the U.S. industry had to be keel-hauled. I mean, literally nothing we made complied because we were doing all these great big cars that the American public wanted. And uh, he kind of bet the farm on a new series of front-wheel drive cars called the K-Cars, which were just discussed in that, in that uh, old television ad. Uh, and, of course, the capital expenditures basically drove the company into near insolvency, which is why he then had to go to the federal government and get loan guarantees. But, you know, whether it was uh, devising a plan, executing the plan, eliminating the obstacles, or selling something that was difficult to sell, uh, he was a master at all those things. Bob, when I hear you talk about that time period, uh, you know, it, it almost reminds me of what we've seen in the past decade. There's this idea that the auto industry has gone through these cycles of massive transformation. Given the fact that you worked with him for, what, nearly two decades very closely, what were some of the key lessons you learned both in business and in life? Well, I, I learned that uh, administering a large company, especially an automobile company, and delegating everything to your subordinates simply does not work. Large organizations respond to leadership, not administrative heads and not managers, but leaders. And Iacocca was a brilliant leader. He wasn't always right. Uh, like all leaders, he made some mistakes. Like all leaders, he when he uh, propounded his ideas, they were sometimes good and sometimes they were bad. Uh, he had faithful acolytes who said yes to everything he suggested. But you know what? It made him feel good, but he didn't value those people. He valued people who would stand up to him and explain to him when he wasn't right. And I think all, all strong leaders will do that because they like to get the job done, but they also like to stay out of trouble. Now, having said Bob, that, he... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Bob. I was just going to say we've been showing um, these these old old footage, including of, of Iacocca doing commercial. So being essentially the, the product spokesperson, in addition to running the company and really at the second company that uh, in Detroit that he was he was at. Is there any executive in any industry right now that would remind you of somebody of that profile in terms of public recognition uh, and and just steering the entire uh, business? Yeah, I would say Elon Musk probably comes closest to it. Elon yeah. Musk of Tesla, who was, you know, he, he personifies Tesla, the good and the bad. Um, and I, I, I think um, uh, Lee Iacocca was a more effective leader of a large corporation. But again, Lee Iacocca was like, like all brilliant leaders, like all people who actually changed the world, he was flawed. He had extremely positive sides and he also had some sides that you, you sat there and you wondered how did this guy ever get to this to this position because what he's talking about doesn't make any sense he could also be cruel and vindictive um, if you did something that he felt was not in his immediate best interest uh, sometimes he was very shy in public when he was with a, a crowd that he didn't know very well so I, I wrote a whole chapter about him in my book, Icons and Idiots, and I describe him as a very, very complex but highly intelligent 
and overall highly effective executive. Yeah, well, he's the man who brought us or helped bring us the minivan, which uh, I guess you could argue sort of saved the automobile industry at the time, right, Bob? Well, yeah, that and a lot of other things. You know, the economy came back, but the, I, I'm always amazed that people look at his biggest accomplishments. They say Ford Mustang and minivan. Now, his biggest accomplishment was in 1987 when, against all advice from Wall Street or, or even internally, and I admit I was against it, uh, the purchase of American Motors. I mean, we barely had the cash to do it, but what came with American Motors? The Jeep brand, and the Jeep brand today is the uh, goose that laid the golden egg for, for FAC. Yeah. Uh, Bob, always appreciate your insights on all topics, okay. uh, and certainly on this one, giving us sort of a broad sense from Mr. Iacocca as well. Thank you. Thank you. Lee Iacocca is survived by his sister, two daughters, eight grandchildren as well. He was 94 years old. We'll be right back.